TorahCafe.com. The Ram Chao, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato, in his famous work, Mesilis Yesharim, says like this, if a person is pulled after the desires of this world and succumbs to them, not only does he taint himself, he also taints the world at large. However, if he controls himself, he uplifts himself and simultaneously uplifts the world. So what we do, it's a fundamental belief in Judaism, what we do affects not only us, but the world at large. Now this idea is not limited just to the idea of deeds. Let's take it a step back. Speech. How many times did someone say something negative? Kids say it all the time. And the parent or the friend, how could you say that? Don't even say that. Don't even think that. Why? They're just words. Don't even say that. I said something bad. I said something mean to, about somebody. Don't even say that. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt anything. They're just words. Why do we say that? It's engraved in our psyche that words do have an effect. We're not always aware of the actual effect that it has, but each of our words has a tangible and palatable effect on reality. In Judaism, the story is told of the Baal Shem Tev, who, in his synagogue, had two people arguing with one another. And one person said to the other, he got in his, in his rage, I'm going to tear you apart like a fish. And so everyone, and so the Baal Shem Tev gathered everyone in the synagogue. Everyone put their arms around each other and said, close your eyes. When they close their eyes, they begin to shriek. The Baal Shem Tev showed them what the vision that they had seen was the man actually ripping the other person apart like a fish. Meaning that on some level, in some reality, this was actually taking place. The idea of Lashon Hara, negative speech, talking bad about somebody else. We say in our tradition that it negatively influences three people. The one who says the bad, the bad words about the person. So the one who says, the one who listens to it because he's hearing these negative ideas, and also the one who's being spoken about. Now, the one who says it, I can understand that. He's talking things he shouldn't be talking about. The one who listens to it, I can understand that also. Say, listening to things they shouldn't be listening to. But the one who it's about, how is he influenced in a negative way? Now, if you want to say, okay, he's in the room and he's going to get his feelings hurt, so I understand. But e, we're talking not in, not in the case where the person is in the room and they're having their feelings hurt. How is he negatively affected? says that these negative words that they're speaking actually creates a negative force that surrounds the person and drags them down, even if they're not present. Comes the holiday of Yom Kippur. It's the height of the year. The evening of Yom Kippur, where everyone is their best and on their best behavior. What is the first thing that we discuss? What is the first thing that we're talking about publicly as a, as a congregation? Not all the bad things that we did, but kol nidre, all the vows that I made this year. We're talking about speech. So speech has effect. Even in the secular world, is trying is uh, beginning to catch on to this. There was a famous experiment done by the Japanese scientist Masaru Emoto with ice crystals. Basically, the gist of it was that they took water from a spring, put it in cups, and then one group was left as regular water. One group, there was bad things said in front of the water. You're this, you're that, all sorts of negative things. And in front of the other water, 
there was positive things, all sorts of nice things, thank you and you're welcome, and all sorts of nice, just general nice talk. A drop from each of the containers was poured in a petri dish. Those petri dishes were frozen for a few hours. And then they took the drop, the frozen drop in the petri dish, and examined it under a microscope 200 to 500 times. Meaning the, the microscope was 200, amplified it 200 to 500 times uh, the clarity. What they discovered was that those that had positive words said over them, the ice crystals that had developed on the drops were very clean, very beautiful, very ornate. The pictures that you could see, they're published, are very beautiful, very, you know, symmetrical, beautiful. The ones that had negative things said over them are very, you have this here and that, it's, 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 it's all out of, out of symmetry, it doesn't look like anything, it looks very now, take, you could take this as you will, but the idea, at least, that even in secular circles, that the idea that speech has an effect is being reached. A similar, a similar experiment was done um, by an Israeli chemist, an Israeli physicist, um, with bean sprouts, using water that had, to water the bean sprouts, using water that had curses set over it, and water that had other good things said over it, and similar results. The one that had uh, bad things said, the bean sprouts didn't grow so well, and the ones where there was something positive said over it had the bean sprouts growing uh, much better, much faster. Again, take it as you will. Take it as you will, whether you support the science or not. Just the idea that even in the secular world we're recognizing, we're beginning to recognize that speech has an effect on materially really on material reality is a big step in and of itself. So let's go to thought. David Einhorn is the Wall Street guru of the investment philosophy called value investing. It's a tremendous success. Basically, he attributes all of that success to buying optimistically when everyone else is being pessimistic about a certain brand or a certain investment. Everyone says, oh, we're not going to inv invest in this stock. That's the stock that he picks out. And he, he has a positive attitude that it's going to grow. So he buys it when it's real low, when it's real cheap. Has confidence that it's going to, and it works for him. If you look at CEOs and a room full of successful people, most people have natural positive attitude. They're very optimistic. The idea that positive thinking brings good results and the opposite brings negative results is the essence of cognitive psychotherapy. Think positive. I spoke to a, a doctor friend of mine who's a cardiologist and he told me about an experiment that was done in the medical field where children who were terminally ill with cancer were told to play Pac-Man, you know, the, the game where you're like chomping those little food things. And they were told, pretend the little food things are your cancer and the Pac-Man is eating them up. It's eating up your cancer. So as you're playing, your cancer is being eaten up. Those kids who thought positively, their test results, their medical results were much better. They did much better than those who hadn't. Again, take these experiments as you will, just the idea that even in our secular world, the idea of how words and thoughts can influence material, rea material reality is something that is completely new. It's astounding. There was a book and a documentary published several years ago called The Secret, The Law of Attraction. If you think something hard enough and good enough, it's going to happen. So this whole philosophy is very much in vogue. So how does the Torah see it? What is the Torah's view of thinking positive brings positive results? We'll find out next time.